Hi, I'm Greg Rava, and I'm going to talk a little bit about user experience off-screen in the real world. So this here, this is a Magic the Gathering booster pack. It has 15 cards inside, and I want to talk about how this has a very, very positive, very well put together user experience to it. So now the first thing we see here is we have this cardboard sleeve that this is in. It has the little thing that it's hooked onto the shelf from, um, all your pertinent barcode data on the back and everything. It has this nice big splashy picture and there's a variety of pictures when you go to buy one so the the buyer, the user, can essentially choose artwork that they think has better cards in there that, that appeals to them a little more. Um, and it's all this very splashy artwork. It's very easy to tell what cards are what. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up now. This is a part I'm not a big fan of since it's sort of hard to tell where to open it. And there's no good way to preserve this packaging since it is such a nice looking package. You just sort of have to rip at it. Um, so inside this sleeve, you open it up into the same artwork here, if you notice, a little tinfoil um, tin sleeve of cards. Now, there is a right way to go about doing this, the intended user experience way. I'm going to try to do that. So you open the cards, and now there's an anticipation building here for the user, because the user has no clue what cards are inside this right now. So you slowly sort of crease the packaging open, and you open it up. Now the way that they have this, this experience designed is that the common cards, the cards that, not that people care less about them, but that are more common, people are more likely to have seen more of, come first. So the, you get the chance for the anticipation to build. So you can read through these common cards, and you're like, okay, I got this one here, this one here, you read some of the mechanics, and it just sort of builds the anticipation toward the, the rare card at the end of it. Some people rip through it, I don't think that's doing it right, I think you sort of have to let that experience build a bit. So you look through the cards, and then after a couple of cards here, you see the black symbols mean, right there, those black symbols mean that they are common cards. So you sort through them, and then you eventually hit the, the uncommons, which are these silver symbols. I realize I'm a little sideways on the screen here. I'm sorry about that. And so you anticipation build like, oh, these are interesting cards. And ooh, you got the nice big splashy shiny one here with this gold symbol, um, which is actually is a pretty good card. So I'm actually I'm very happy on this little investment for my class project I put in. Um, this is a nice card. And then they always end with a land, which is sort of a basic card. And then... The, the, the sort of top off the user experience, they have this little rules card at the end here, which they talk about a mechanic in the cards, a, a part of the gameplay. They give you a link to the website with the rules on it, which is always handy to have. And on the back, they always have a little advertisement. Um, I think it's very effective as a user experience just because there is that anticipation sort of built into it. It's a very mundane way of doing it, but I think it's very effective, especially since Wizards of the Coast, the company that makes these cards with the first real trading card game, so they were pioneers in the field of this. Um, and it's a big improvement on how it used to happen, because before there weren't even these symbols to indicate what was rare or what wasn't, so people almost didn't know what to get excited over. So it's a very interesting way, from user experience side, it's a very interesting way to look at it. Um, I hope that made sense. I definitely left out things I want to talk about, but I only had one pack of cards, so I only have one take. So thank you for listening. And have a good night.